Lal Singh Chadda has been in the news of late because of the boycott Lal Singh Chadda trend and Amir Khan's numerous statements where he tried to pacify the ever increasing voices against the film. Here at East Mojo, we ignore such unnecessary clamor and plan to look at the film objectively. You are watching Entertainment, 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 and I am your host, Ambar Chatterjee, and I guess you already figured out which movie we are going to be reviewing today. Lal Singh Chadda is an official remake of the cult classic Forrest Gump and chronicles the journey of Lal Singh Chadda as he lives an extraordinary life through political, social, religious and personal upheavals culminating in the present time. As I sat patiently through almost three hours of Lal Singh Chadda and viewed it with an open mind, I realized that the writer Atul Kulkarni and director Advait Chandan were not particularly sure whether they wanted to recreate the original Forrest Gump frame for frame or take the idea of the original and make a whole new film. This resulted in the film feeling uneven and conflicted at many junctures. Amir Khan is often referred to as Mr. Perfectionist, but this film proves yet again after Dhoom and Thugs of Hindustan that he is not. Forrest Gump is one of the most American-American films. Its emotional cues and initiation of the titular character into key dramatic and historical moments are so immersed in Americanness and the American way of life that it is nearly impossible to translate these portions into any other culture. The film delivers emotional and dramatic punches one after another and it never feels slow or boring because of the power these emotional and dramatic moments have. They have this power because they are embedded in the real history, way of life, culture and tragedy that is very relatable but in an American context. When Advait Chandan and Atul Kurkarni try to put the same story in the Indian context, they lose a lot of its inherent power. They are forced to make changes to the moments in the original that liquidates the impact of numerous key moments and leads to the film feeling tiring and dragged even in the first half. By the time we reach the second half, the situation gets worse. Lal Singh Chadha lacks a sense of urgency and seriousness from start to finish. In a scene that should have been chilling, we see young Lal and his mother, played by Mona Singh, somehow survive the terrifying massacre of Sikhs after the assassination of Indira Gandhi. This scene comes and goes by without leaving any impact. This lack of impact has as much to do with the execution of the scene as it has with the performances. A scene of this nature should have been terrifying, but sadly, it is not. The same can be said about the Kargil war sequences where a major character dies but this sequence too feels oddly pedestrian and brings nothing special to the table. I didn't care for any of the characters in this scene even though the film takes enough time to build these characters up and forge a bond with the audiences. There is absolutely no feel for the character of Rupa that is assigned to Karina Kapoor Khan. She neither looks the age nor feels like it. Her limitations are exposed even more in the scenes where she is portrayed as a college student. She looks disinterested in most of the sequences and even in the emotional moments, she keeps a straight face. We are asked to believe that she is an upcoming starlet who bewitches a major underworld dawn by her looks, but the kind of wardrobe that is thrust upon her further destroys any chance of taking her character seriously. She just looks tired and certainly not the beauty that would incite the kind of romance that we are asked to believe that she did in Lal Singh Chadda. There is no chemistry between her and Amir Khan. Their scenes together feel lifeless. Her deficiencies feel even more pronounced when you compare her performance with Robin Wright's smashing portrayal as Jenny 
in Forrest Gump. This was one of Amir's most uneven essays of late. He is unable to hit the sweet spot with the wackiness of Lal Singh Chadha. He underplays the character in certain sequences and overdoes the wide-eyed, fixed look with complimentary pauses in between sentences. I felt that he was trying to mishmash his character traits from PK and Dhoom 3 and draw a parallel with Tom Hanks' Forrest Gump. Sadly, Hanks' Gump was a lot more serious composed, reliable, and a normal guy whose limitations were just about noticeable. Amir's overdoing his antiques not only mars the believability of the character, but also ruins the seriousness of the things that Lal is shown doing and achieving. Before I move forward, I would like to give a heads up for the spoilers ahead. I hate to get into the subtle politics of films. Sadly, when the representations are so on your face and bizarre, there is no hiding from it. One of the biggest changes that the film makes to the plot of Forrest Gump is in the reimagining of a beloved character from the film, Lieutenant Dan Taylor, the commander of Gump, who he saves. Dan loses his legs in the film and wants to die on the battlefield, but Gump pulls him out against his will. The man suffers a lot, forges a lifelong friendship with Gump, becomes wealthy and later comes to appreciate Gump for all that he had done for him. The same character here is reimagined as a terrorist who attacks the Indians during the Kargil War, is saved by Lal Singh Chadha, is never discovered by the army, lives in India for years, becomes wealthy, is featured by a popular magazine and then leaves for Pakistan to spread the message of peace. This character is shown in the most positive light possible even after he has gunned down numerous Indians. I wonder how parents of the people who lost their children in the Kargil War will react to these bits of the film. Not only is this the most stupid and off-putting portion of the film, it is also like rubbing salt into the wounds of the hundreds who lost their near and dear ones to terrorist bullets. To depict the man as never receiving any punishment was just taking it a step further. No matter how much the makers try to justify or sugarcoat this portion, it will always be in bad taste and will definitely steer up further boycott calls against the film. There are a few things that can be applauded in the film. Some emotional moments do leave some impact. The music of the film is consistent and the Firna Aisi Raat Aayegi track was beautiful. The cinematography was great. I especially enjoyed the opening sequence. Amir Khan shows some of his trademark sparks in certain sequences and Mona Singh is proficient as Lal Singh Chadha's mother. Having said that, Lal Singh Chadha is still a mammoth disappointment. It should have been flawless. It should have been emotionally disarming and its titular character should have become an instant hit with the audiences. Sadly, this film ends up being frustratingly average. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe to East Mojo for more reviews. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.